Look good. Yeah, I mean, it looked like yesterday. Butterfly looks strong. I mean, you can maybe do a few fast turns, you know, maybe some pull down work, and then okay. I'll see you later today. Yeah. Ready, go. A lot of kids dream of making it and going to the Olympic trials. It's always been a swimmer's dream. It's, it's definitely humbling because the second you think you're the fastest in the area, you are introduced to people that are three leagues above you. So it's definitely an extremely exciting experience to be able to see these people you've seen on TV all of your life and swim against them. You really realize how much work you truly have to do to really get to the top of the sport. I started swimming when I was 11, and I also joined canyons when I was 11. When I was 11, a uh, coach told me that I could never become, you know, a really great athlete and a good swimmer. They just said that I'll just stay in age group for like the rest of my swim career. And then I also had a coach that told me that, you know, I could become a really good athlete if I really wanted to and put my mind to it. Coach Brian, he helped me gain confidence in my breaststroke and Coach Kevin just sealed the deal with my breaststroke and fly. I remember um, seeing her for the first time when she was really slow because she had just started getting into, getting into swimming and, you know, she would used to like tap my shoulder and pretend like it wasn't her. Canyons Aquatics has always been my team ever since I started swimming and then also Valencia High School. I qualified for my first like sectional cut. That was like a huge thing for me when I was 12 years old, a year after I started swimming. And then at 13 years old, I got my futures time. At 14, I got my winter juniors. 15, I got my summer juniors. And then 16, I hit my Olympic trial time. I think Issa overall is just such an amazing person to everybody. Even if Issa wasn't one of our top athletes at Canyons, she would be extremely well respected by everybody on our team. Lisa has you know, a lot of dedication, a lot of commitment. She's willing to do the extra work and go the extra mile, which you know, most people aren't. You know, the average person doesn't want to do that. I started my swimming career at age three in my HOA team. From there, I kind of enjoyed it and I started to, to get faster with it. And ever since 12, I've been training uh, competitively. I've always been a member of Canyons Aquatic Club. I've swam um, on my HOA team, which is the 001 Dolphins, and that's where I really started out. And then of course my high school team, Hart High School. He wasn't quote unquote like one of those studs where they're you know, winning events at Junior Olympics as a 12-year-old or even a 14-year-old. I think my parents, they made a decision to keep me not as competitive while some of my other friends became more competitive in my more early years. And I definitely really wanted to get to that level with them. And I felt like I was always at a disadvantage up until I was 12, um, not getting that extra training in. I always just had that goal to try to beat out the people next to me, especially in a sport where I knew that, you know, I had the best chance of being the best in it, you know. He really started blossoming in, in high school. It wasn't much longer, he got his junior national cuts, and then COVID happened, and he went from having winter junior nationals all the way to his Olympic trials cut. Kyle's a really great racer. You know, he, he's able to get in the zone almost every time. But his consistency is, you know, it, it's really at an at elite level. I can always, count on him to have a good race and always to do his best effort. Based off of how I 
um, did against other people and how much I enjoyed just the water itself. Um, I knew that swimming was really the sport that was meant for me. I just, I know she can be better. I know she's capable of doing some really great things. She had a really tough time getting her cut. She had some struggles and some challenges and it was mainly mental. For a short period of time, she was just so focused on getting the cut because she was so close that she just kept putting too much pressure on herself. You know, I, I don't know how many times she swam the 100 breaststroke and she was within, you know, five tenths of a second. It was probably three or four times. And sometimes I'm just like, can I really do this? And, you know, question myself. And I think that that's what happens to everyone. A lot of it's just, you know, just little mental errors of either not being focused or sometimes if things aren't going her way, I think sometimes she can shut down. When I'm going through those mental blocks, I'm questioning, can I really go 59 in my 100 breast, or am I gonna go 101? I think it's just me growing as a person and as an athlete, you know, not psyching myself out again. If she can learn how to overcome that, you know, 95% of the time even, really finds that confidence and really believes in herself, you know, that'll go a long ways for her. The trials cuts when I was younger just seemed so far out there. I didn't really set in that I could genuinely be going for a trials cut. It was always in the back of my head to at least approach it or get close to it. But when I ended up actually getting the time on my very first try, I was, uh, you know, obviously super excited, but a little surprised for sure. It was in St. George, Utah at the Dixie State Aquatic Center and it was during a long course time trial which in qualifying for the Olympic trials the only way you can qualify is in a, a 50 meter long course pool which is the Olympic length. So I realistically had one shot to do it at the time throughout that whole meet and I just ended up making it count. When he qualified I was like dancing around, I was so excited. I was looking at my watch, I could tell it was close. Kyle was just working really hard, he's moving his arms as fast as he could. I didn't really know how fast people next to me were going and I didn't know, you know, how fast I was going. Go Kyle, go! You know, he got his hand on the wall, he looked up and... Yes! Yeah, Kyle! I mean, it was like, wow, like he got it. You know, I, I just jumped up as high as I could. The first reaction I got was my coach, you know, like putting his hands up in the air. So I knew something had happened that was good. And when I saw the board and I realized I had gotten the time by one one hundredth of a second, you know, it was it was it was pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what a lot of people won't see is the time leading up in the preparation was extremely difficult. Stay at home order will go into effect for Southern California. Outside of your household. I just was kind of swimming in backyard pools and, and basically whatever pools I could find, whether it was legal or illegal to get into the pool, just any way I could train. 
a lot of the training we did even just three or four months ago was, was really the training that led up to these moments now. And you really have to realize as a swimmer, as any athlete, a lot of the training throughout your whole life and especially in like the last few months is really what can affect what happens now, not, not what happens in the last few days. I think every time she got up to the block, she was, she was only thinking about her time. I want to get the trials cut. I want to get the trials cut. And I think the first meet, she was probably like a 112 low, which was good for the first long course meet. She went another 112 at another meet, and then she went a 111, then a 111 uh, at the Futures Championship, which was the week before she got her cut. And each time she wouldn't get it, and Man, she was just so hard on herself. She, you know, was trying to get her to understand, you know what, like there's still good things about this race. You can still learn from the experience on how to get better moving forward. And it took her the entire summer to, to get that down. Five Canyons Aquatic Club is a dump. My grandpa, he passed away back in February of that year. I just wanted to get the Olympic trial and do it for him. Her final swim comes up, I just had to talk to Issa, like, you know, what, why do you want to swim? She's like, I just like racing. It's like, okay, go race. Before he passed away, he told me that I was able to get my Olympic trial time and I had no worries. Before I dove in, I felt a touch on my shoulder and I 100% believe that it was him and he gave me the strength to get my Olympic trial time. Here as the B final comes to the final touch, the winning time is a 110.84 for Isa Adame. It was so surreal. My mom was in the stand. She was calling me. She's like, Isa, you did it. Oh my God, you did it. And I'm just like, I was speechless. I didn't know what was going on. I saw the clock and I was like, no, I did not just go that. And my coach was like, you did it, Isa. You qualified. It just felt like a dream. I, I don't know. Like I had somebody pinch me and they're like, you did it. No, no. And you know, I'm like really grateful for that experience. It was a surreal moment. <laughs> Swimming has shaped me to the person that I am today and it continues shaping me into a really good athlete and a really good person. Just sticking with something and training super hard in order to succeed is, it's not something that happens right away. If you can just keep a great mindset and work hard, you know, your aspirations really might come true. It's one of the biggest reasons why, you know, people love doing sports is, you know, going through challenges and struggles and having hopes and joy and, and triumph. It's something that you can carry on, you know, through the rest of your life and it's something you'll always remember.